Did you know that the richest person ever was a black man? His name was Mansa Musa. He was actually a king of Mali. And his wealth was so immense that it was hard to really determine how wealthy was he. Today, we're going to answer that question. Mansa means emperor. So Mansa Musa means emperor Musa. Mansa Musa was born in 1280 into a family of rulers. His brother Mansa Abu Bakar ruled the empire until 1312 when he surrendered his throne to go on an expedition. According to 14th century Syrian historian Shabib al-Umari, Abu Bakar was obsessed with the Atlantic Ocean and what lay beyond it. He reportedly embarked on an expedition with a fleet of 2000 ships. The ships included men, women, and slaves. They sailed off never to return. Many believe they reached South America. In any case, Mansa Musa inherited the kingdom his brother left behind. And under the rule of Mansa Musa, the prosperous empire grew to span a sizable portion of West Africa from the Atlantic coast to the inland trading hub of Timbuktu and parts of the Sahara Desert. As the territory grew, while Musa was on the throne, so did the economic standing of its citizens. The kingdom stretched for about 2000 miles from the Atlantic Ocean all the way to modern-day Niger, taking in parts of what is now Senegal, Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, the Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, Guinea, and the Ivory Coast. With such a large landmass came great resources such as gold and salt. During the reign of Mansa Musa, the empire of Mali accounted for almost half of the old world's gold, and all of it belonged to the king. While holding the title of the ruler of the wealthiest emperor in the western part of Africa, the main source of his kingdom's wealth was gold and salt. He had absolute power and control as every piece of gold and salt produced in the kingdom automatically became his. In the words of Rudolf Butch Ware, an associate professor of history at the University of California, Contemporary accounts of Musa's wealth are so breathtaking that it's almost impossible to get a sense of just how wealthy and powerful he truly was. According to calculations based on the value of the dollar, prominent financial analysts and historians have determined that Mansa Musa's net worth as of today would be upward of over 450 billion dollars. The emperor's wealth was virtually impossible to calculate. His wealth was so enormous that it is believed that he accounted for over 40% of the world's total gold reserves. Could you imagine that? He basically had almost half of the wealth of the entire world. Mansa Musa's subjects even became rich, accompanied by thousands of richly dressed servants and supporters. Musa made generous donations to the poor and to charitable organizations as well as the rulers of the land his entourage crossed. Mansa Musa was a devout Muslim and not one to travel on a budget. He brought a caravan stretching as far as the eye could see. He made a legendary pilgrimage from Mali to Mecca. On that journey, he traveled almost 3000 miles on this caravan he took over 70,000 subjects consisting of his entire royal courts and officials soldiers griots entertainers merchants camel drivers and 12,000 slaves as well as a long train of goats and sheep for food it was a city literally moving through the desert a city whose inhabitants all the way down to the slaves were clad in elaborately stitched gold and the finest persian silk 
a hundred camels were in tow, each camel carrying hundreds of pounds of pure gold. It was a sight to behold, and the sight got even more opulent once the caravan reached Egypt, where they could really show off their wealth. He gave both gold and extravagant gifts lavishly. In fact, he flooded so much wealth into cities like Cairo, Egypt, metals like gold actually decreased in value. A full decade came and went in the wake of his visits, and many markets still had not properly recovered. In the end, Musa gained back at least some of the gold he had given away, picking it up at a high interest from Cairo lenders. He, by himself, actually caused global inflation. The emperor also made generous donations to the poor and to charitable organizations as well as the rulers of the lands his entourage crossed. But, don't be confused, he knew how to spend money. The ability to spend money is not a major accomplishment in of itself. However, when you consider that Mansa Musa frequently traveled with a caravan of 60,000 subjects, you have to understand that displaying and spending wealth like this can be seen as an accomplishment unto itself. This map gives a depiction of the journey from Mali to Mecca. It was a journey, as stated, that traveled almost 3,000 miles. Imagine that, folks. 3,000 miles through all types of terrain, deserts, storms, mountains, seas. And these 70,000 plus people were able to do that. As a devoted Muslim, on each of his pilgrimages to Mecca, every Friday, whenever he and his men stopped to rest, Mansa Musa would build a mosque at that location. Among his many other impressive exploits, he was a fierce warrior, with an army numbering around 100,000 men, including an armored cavalry corps of 10,000 horses. And with a talented general, he was able to extend and maintain Mali's vast empire, doubling its territory and making it second in size only to that of the Mongol Empire at the time. Just to reiterate, Mali controlled lands up to the Gambia and Lower Senegal in the west. In the north, tribes were subdued along the whole length of the Western Sahara border region. In the east, control spread up to the Gao and the Niger River, and to the south, the Burr region and the forests of what became known as the Gold Coast came under Mali oversight. Under his rule, there is no question that the Mali Empire rose to dazzling heights. It grew to include a number of additional regions. In fact, one visitor noted that it took him a full four months to travel from one end of the empire to the other. Mansa Musa was indeed a champion of Islamic religion and learning. He made Timbuktu a center for commerce and education. He also established the University of Sankor and Timbuktu University, among many others. Under his rulership, Timbuktu was indeed a world power and a leader in economic resources, education, and trade. A number of famous structures went up during his lifetime, including the Din Jigga Mosque, which could be seen in this slide. Mansa Musa set up a number of educational centers and mosques, which cannot be emphasized enough. Architects came from both Spain and Cairo in order to build not only his staggering palace, but other buildings as well. Although the palaces does not exist in this present, it is worth noting that the university and mosque both continue to stand to this day. Some 800 years later, and his 25-year reign left behind a lasting legacy of wealth, kindness, generosity, innovation, education, respect, authority, and responsible rulership. Thank you for watching, and until next time. Also, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe.